So, folks, one thing you know for sure is that the people closest to Old Donnie can do the most damage to Old Donnie. Whether or not they want to, whether or not they feel like they should, the people closest to him have all of the dirt, and when the chips are down, they're going to take him down. And that applies both to Mark Meadows and Mary Trump, who both, for very different reasons, with very different levels of desire, are taking Trump down right now based on what they know. So Mark, of course, and we're going to talk a bit about him, is taking him down because he has all the skeletons in the closet and is going to be forced to dish all the dirt. But Mary Trump just scored two big wins over Donald. A win in the sense that she just tore him apart in a brand new interview. And critically, guys, she has scored a massive historic legal win on Trump that's going to send reverberations not just in her own case, but in other cases as well. And I love to see Mary get some revenge on her loser uncle. Let's just start briefly with her interview because she really tears into her uncle in a pretty brutal way. Trump, do you think they're ready to have the scales fall from their eyes finally? No. And quite honestly, Katie, I don't know if they're ever going to hear about what is actually going on with the Dominion defamation case. Why would they? We we know that after this information came out, hosts like Tucker Carlson were continuing to peddle the big lie. Uh, so unfortunately, unless something significant happens, and I believe Glenn Kirshner spoke about this earlier, unless the government is willing to take steps to uh, protect the American people from the lies that are peddled from um, by outfits like Fox, we're going to continue to be in this very dangerous place where almost half of the country is being lied to and being told that their rights are being taken away from them when, in fact, the opposite is true. Yesterday, the Michigan GOP chose election denier and former Secretary of State candidate Christina Caramo to be their state party chair. Far-right extremist and Trump loyalist, Caramo made headlines for her wild and very bizarre claims about the exorcism of demons and how evolution was a fraudulent theory. I mean, we, we laugh and we chuckle, but the reality is, Mary, what is this telling you about the current state of the battle for our democracy? I mean, we saw Trump fail with his primary candidates that he was pushing in the last midterms, but then you see somebody like this who's a Trump loyalist and she won the state party chair in the state of Michigan. It tells us that the fight is far from over and democracy continues to hang in the balance. Uh, we can't let down our guard, uh, which I think was the impulse after President Biden, Biden was thankfully elected in 2020, because look where we are now. Uh, although people who were there on January 6th have been indicted and convicted and sentenced, the people who were in charge of organizing and inciting the insurrection are running for president, right? So uh, there needs to be more pushback. Uh, as long as Republicans feel that becoming more and more extreme is the only road to power, that's the road they're going to continue to go down. And that is going to make uh, the situation much more precarious for the country as a whole. Speaking of that road of extremism and the promise of power at the end of it, I firmly believe Trump will be indicted this year by F by uh, Fanny Willis, the Fulton County District Attorney. I think that'll be the first of many indictments that are to come. I guess my question for you is, though, how reasonable how reasonable are fears of many Americans about the potential for violence being incited by Donald Trump? Should he be indicted? I mean, we saw how absolutely horrible January 6th was. First of all, I, I appreciate your optimism. Uh, I, have, I have to be honest. I, I have my dark days where I'm not entirely sure that indictments are going to come. But if indeed they do, and I agree with you, the first would probably come out of Georgia. Uh, hopefully many more shoes will drop. But, you know, in the meantime, we're in a situation where we are sort of in a state of suspended animation and more and more 
people are continuing to be fooled by outlets like Fox and think that something's been stolen from them. Donald, of course, will use any opportunity to incite more violence if he thinks it suits him. So we are not out of the woods yet. I was quite heartened, I have to say, that in the 2022 midterms, nothing happened. There was no uh, appreciable violence, even though a lot of election deniers lost their bids. Uh, and what I also found interesting is that most election di deniers, with the, the exception, I think, of Carrie Lake, uh, didn't didn't uh, put up a fight. They accepted their loss and they moved on, which is to say, I, I think it's not as likely as I might have thought a couple of years ago, but we still need to be prepared uh, for all eventualities, unfortunately. So she notes there that even if she's not as optimistic as some people are that he's ultimately going to go down, he's clearly at the weakest and darkest point in his life. And she kind of destroys him and says this, this monster is, is not going to reform himself. He's not going to get better. He's only going to get worse. And as he becomes more and more vulnerable to legal peril, he's going to get more and more violent. And no one's going to stop him on the right wing, as they noted in that clip briefly. Like, Fox is not going to stop him. They might ignore him. They don't want him around anymore but what they've shown is that when the chips are down they'll bend the knee to trump at the very best they'll stand by passively and let him do evil and at the worst they'll egg it on and they'll perpetuate it and they'll exacerbate it they might even lead it in some cases but the point is mary ripped him apart and we're going to get to her legal win in a second we're going to get to that but fundamentally this can't be disconnected from the fact that everyone close to donald at this moment is the one that's going to knife him they might not want to ultimately knife him yet but they're going to these two clips explain that neil what do you make of the latest reporting um and the subpoena for mark meadows well, Nicole, I'm glad you started with this point about delay, that delay is what the Trump and his minions modus operandi always is, because that really does raise the question, why did it take Merrick Garland so long to do this? I mean, this is a criminal investigation, as Glenn says, in which Mark Meadows is a central character. He's literally in the room where it happens. Um, and you can't in this investigation go straight to the ultimate potential defendant, Donald Trump, you know he's not going to tell the truth, he's going to obfuscate, he's going to assert privileges and so on. So the Meadows thing is really important to try and get this information, learn about what he was hearing about the election and who won, what did Trump know, what was Trump's state of mind, all of that's really important. And Glenn is also right to say that Meadows is going to fight this and assert executive privilege and it's going to go nowhere. Trump's already lost the same executive privilege claims before the United States Supreme Court just last year, eight to one, with only winning Justice Thomas's vote. And just last week, there was a similar subpoena for Mark Short, who was the vice president's chief of staff, and he asserted executive privilege, lost it again in the nation's second highest court unanimously last week. And what I make of it is that there's really a kind of Trump strategy here, which is to hide behind privilege and secrecy, never tell the truth before under oath about what happened, but then go out to the cameras and to the public and write books and say all this stuff about how, you know, nothing bad ever happened, no crimes were committed. And, you know, we've just in the last few minutes, Nicole, had a really great illustration of this once again, because Trump went on his social media site, Trump Social, and he just said, quote, Thank you to the special grand jury in the great state of Georgia for your patriotism and courage. Total exoneration. <laughs> USA is very proud of you. Now, uh, you and I, we just read that report. Uh, total exoneration is nowhere in that document. No could have not been called in by the Fulton County DA's office because he very well may have been a target or considered a target in the people who they were investigating as part of this special grand jury proceeding. Okay, we got 30 seconds left. Could the jury's finding that there was no widespread fraud in the 2020 election in Georgia have any impact on special counsel Jack Smith's investigation, his federal investigation? It could, but quite frankly, since we have very little time, I'm much more interested in talking about Mark Meadows being subpoenaed by the DOJ. Oh, that 
is the biggest story this week that people are not talking about because he was closest to Trump, probably has the most information, and anything he says, Donald Trump has to be extremely nervous about. Do you think he's going to... Well, I don't even know. Do you? I, I, I'm a little behind on the news, but has he said it, whether he's going to fight that... Supreme? I expect him to fight it tooth and nail, and I expect him to lose for the most part when federal court goes and looks at his reasons for trying to resist that subpoena. So whether it's Mary, who knows all of the dirt on the Trump family and for very, very good reasons, has no issue sharing that dirt with a view to tearing down this family. And and it's frankly, it's evil. Or whether it's Mark Meadows, who for some reason is loyal to Trump and, you know, doesn't want to appear disloyal, but will do whatever it takes to avoid an orange jumpsuit for himself. It's all going down. And this is where this big legal victory comes in. It's such a massive win because Mary, clearly the judge is infuriated by the weak legal argument by Trump's lawyers in a case where he's trying to sue his own niece. And it's also been connected to some wider legal defeats of Donald Trump. And it notes here, in this case, the dispute claims Mary Trump violated a confidentiality clause that prohibits all family members from making the documents public with the former president's lawyers accusing her of conspiring, conspiring with New York Times reporters who used information from the documents for their Pulitzer Prize winning report in 2019 that delivered some of his financial dealings and delved into them. According to Trump's lawyer, arguing before the judge, the line is when they were in the trenches with Ms. Trump, they were going to her attorney's office when they were giving her former burner phones to converse with her and walk her through the steps and have meetings with her. The New York Times was so aggressive with something that frankly, Congress couldn't get their hands on themselves. These are Trump's tax returns before they were formally released, you know, just a few weeks ago. This is a couple years before that. Habas co-counsel representing the former president then insisted that the New York reporters were ordering Mary Trump to provide them with more information, which led the judge to pull them and his law law partner up short. According to Courthouse News, the judge said, you used the word ordered again before adding, what authority did they exercise over her such that she... A grown woman, licensed clinical psychologist, could be compelled by Sue Craig to take any action. And clearly the judge is sick of this. This case is going very, very poorly poorly for Trump and his team. They're getting beat down by Mary Trump and and her lawyers. And what's important to understand is this is connected to other recent defeats where Trump has tried to silence people close to him with all of these confidentiality agreements. And while they can be legal in certain cases and reasonable in certain cases, by and large, Trump's confidentiality agreements are way too broad, both in terms of scope and time, that they've been largely declared invalid. And so it bodes very well for Mary. So this is just awful news for Trump. All the people with dirt, by virtue of the fact that they want to take Trump down or they're forced to, are going to be dishing that dirt. Just awful news. Dr. Mary Trump delivering terrible news about old Donnie's political and legal health and also his poor, poor mental state. The man is cracked and it's going to get everywhere.